state and the reason why I'm talking to you today is using information about VA loans. Having been a veteran and using VA loans several times, I'm quite familiar with the process. Here in San Antonio market, it's also known as Military City USA. Now I've been finding a lot of veterans aren't familiar with what the VA home loan provides. So I'm going to kind of go through the start to finish of the VA loan and give you some information that could save you several thousand dollars. Now, to start off with a VA loan, you're going to need to do a few things. There are certain eligibility requirements that you must meet in order to qualify for a VA home loan. You can find these eligibility requirements at www.benefits.va.gov backslash home loan. Now, they'll have individual requirements for National Guard, active duty, um, but let's say that you meet those requirements, you're going to need to find a lender. So when you're shopping for a lender, make sure you talk to two or three different lenders. You can actually talk to several lenders through a 30-day period, and it only counts as one hit against your credit report. When it comes to buying large purchases like homes and cars, the credit union or credit reporting companies, they will allow you to shop for rates within a 30-day period and only count all of them as one. When you find a lender, you want to make sure that they specialize in VA home loans. Ask them, how many do you do on average a year? If they're not familiar with the processes, that could be an indicator that it may cause some bumps in the road along your way. Next, you need to start looking at obtaining your certificate of eligibility. Now, your certificate of eligibility is what you provide to the lender that shows that you are eligible for a VA home loan. So for veterans, your 214 will be documentation that you will need as well. Now you can go to your eBenefits website and work on your certificate of eligibility. If you're on active duty, you're going to need a statement of service signed by your company commander or your adjutant. That statement of service is going to need certain information. You're going to need your full name, social security number, your date of birth, the date that you entered active duty, their duration of any lost time and the name of the commander providing this information. So again, your name, your social, your date of birth, the duration of any time lost, the time that you were on active duty, and the command authorizing that form. If you're in the National Guard or Reserve, you're going to need the same form with the same information, your name, social security number, date of birth, date entered on duty, total number of credible years of service, that's a change from active duty, so you're going to need the total number of credible years of service on the statement of service, any duration of any lost time, in the name of the command providing the form. If you've been discharged through the National Guard, your NGV, NGV Form 22, the report of separation of record of service for each period of National Guard service, or your NGB Form 23 Retirement Points Accounting and Proof of the, char uh, the Character of Service. So you're going to need all these different forms, the Certificate of Eligibility, and the Statement of Service, your NGB Forms, all that's going to be submitted to your lender. Okay? When you get all that information submitted to your lender, then you need to start working on finding a home. Now it's okay to talk to a realtor uh, when this whole process is going. Any good realtor will work with you and talk with you uh, while you're still getting everything taken care of. So when you're working with a realtor, it's important to let them know that you are going to be getting a VA loan. There are certain things called non-allowables that come into play. For example, every VA loan, you need to provide a termite inspection. It's known as a wood-destroying insect inspection. But you don't pay for that. The seller pays for that. So there are certain things that a realtor will help you walk through that process. Now, the VA loan, it doesn't guarantee rates. Uh, it doesn't pay any closing costs. What it does is it provides the veteran or active duty member a guarantee on your home loan 
to where you don't have to put a down payment. You can if you want to, but you don't have to put a down payment down. So it eliminates the need for primary mortgage insurance, PMI, or mortgage insurance uh, policy, MIP, if you're using an FHA loan. So it saves you a couple hundred dollars a month by not having to have an insurance policy on the mortgage. There is a funding fee. The funding fee is a percentage of the home loan, and the percentage changes based on the number of times that you've used the VA loan. So if you use a VA loan, you sell the house, you go and use a VA loan, and PCS, or retire, or just move, or stay in the same area and you're upgrading or downsizing. So every time that you use that VA loan, the percentage changes. So I'm not going to get into the percentages because everybody's situation varies. But here's one key fact that I found a lot of veterans, they're not familiar with. Okay? And it, call, it goes with the VA funding fee. I'm going to read it right from the VA's website so that you can get in the words right from the horse's mouth. Okay? You do not have to pay the VA funding fee if you are a veteran receiving VA compensation for a service-connected disability or a veteran who would be entitled to receive compensation for a service-connected disability if you did re not receive retirement or active duty pay or if you're a surviving spouse of a veteran who died in service or from a service-connected disability. So if you have had a VA loan in the past and you have or had a service-connected disability on or before the date of that mortgage and you paid a VA funding fee, you can reach out to the VA and talk to them about getting a refund. But it's important to make sure that you share that you have a service-connected disability so that you don't have to pay that VA funding fee and save several thousand dollars. So if you have any questions or you need anything, feel free to give me a call. My phone number is 210-319-9713. You can reach me at my email listed above. You can find me on Facebook at listed by DK or you can find me on Twitter at DK Property SA. I appreciate your service. If you have any questions as a military veteran, I'm here to help you. Take care and have a great day.